Good morning, everybody, from Masamara River Lodge in Masamara, Kenya. Anyway, if you'll look, I want you to see the view before I start the video of what God's been talking to me about. Down there, you'll see hippos far away. They look like little black rocks in the river, but they are actually hippos. This is the view outside our tent, and you'll see the tent right there. You can see people are loading our bags right now, getting them out of the rooms. So, it is beautiful here. And over there on the hillside it are some, um, not antelope, uh, I forget what they're called. But anyway, there's some kind of wild animal. Anyway, it's gorgeous here, as you can see. This has been our view the past few days. We're getting ready to leave here and head to Bita Village, Kenya, where we will hold crusades, leadership sessions, a revival services and uh, go to an orphanage and deliver some supplies. So anyway, when I left Washington DC and started my trip to Orlando, which basically started my trip to Africa, the Lord spoke to me and said, cleared for takeoff. I'll never forget, I had music blaring in my ears and I heard the pilot say cleared for takeoff. And then it was God spoke to me and said, you're cleared for takeoff. So this is what the Lord moved me to do for the moving in the miraculous summer 2019 the team that's expecting to see miracles, signs, and wonders. And we've already seen some wonders of God's greatness in this Masa Matter Park. Daniel chapter 2, verses 14 to 23. And Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Arioch, the captain of the king's guard, which was gone forth to slay the wise men of Babylon. He answered and said to Arioch, the king's captain, why is the decree so hasty from the king? Then Arioch made the thing known to Daniel. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time and that he would show the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, that they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning the secret that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. See, he went and told them the problem, and then he blessed God, beginning with verse 19. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision, then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of the God of my father, thou God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might, and has made known unto me now what we desired of thee, for thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. Then we have to anticipate takeoff. You know, cleared for takeoff is one thing, but then you have to anticipate being able to take off from where you are. And so we were anticipating our takeoff. And Haggai 2 1 through 9 says, He encouraged the people. Well, this is the summary. He encourages the people to, to the work by promises of greater glory to the second temple than was in the first. Verse 1, In the seventh month, in the one and twentieth day of the month, came the word of the Lord by the prophet Haggai, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Sheltal, the governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, and to the residue of the people, saying, Who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? And how do you see it now? Is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing? Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, saith the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua, Son of Josedek, the high priest, and be strong, all ye people of the land, saith the Lord, and work, for I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts. According to the word that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remaineth among you, fear ye not. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once it is a little while, while I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. And I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. So in this passage, God's telling them, what you once were, you no longer are. And I believe that's us. What we once were, we no longer are. It's time for us to get closer to him. It's time for us to be more for Jesus. It's time for us to walk more with God and be more of God. And then he says... Think about who I am. I'm going to shake everything that can be shaken. Silver's mine, the gold's mine. Whatever you need, I've got. The glory of the latter house is going to be greater than that of the former, saith the Lord. And in this place, he's going to give us peace. So we shouldn't be fretting. We should have the peace of God with us. And then he says in verse 18, Consider now from this day and upward, from the 420th day of the ninth month, even from the day of the foundation that the foundation of the lord's temple was laid consider it is a seed yet in the barn yea as yet the vine and the fig tree and the pomegranate and the olive tree hath not brought forth from this day will i bless you and again the word of the lord came unto haggai in the four and twentieth day of the month saying speak to zerubbabel governor of judah saying i will shake the heavens and the earth and i will overthrow the throne of kingdoms 
and I will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the heathen, and I will overthrow the chariots and those that ride in them. And the horses and the riders shall come down, every one by the sword of his brother. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, will I take thee, O Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Shiltal, saith the Lord, and will make thee as a signet, for I have chosen thee, saith the Lord of hosts. So what we have to realize is he comes to us and says, think about this. You don't have to worry because I'm going to overthrow your enemies. I'll destroy them and I'll overthrow their chariots and those that ride in them. Their horses and riders will come down. And that day you will be made as a signet or you will be made and you because I have chosen you, says God. And then we're taken off. First Timothy 1, 18 and 20. This charge I commit unto thee, my son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went up before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare, holding faith and a good conscience, which some, having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck. In other words, he's saying, don't forget. Make sure you know. Make sure you know what the prophecies were that went before you, that thou by them, that you might be able to war a good warfare. And you keep a hold of the faith. You keep a hold of a good conscience. Don't, others have put that away concerning faith of made shipwreck. And verse 20 says, Of whom is Hymenius and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. I don't want to be delivered to the devil. And when we have taken off, what should we expect from God when we reach cruising altitude? Zechariah 2, 5 through 13 says, For I, saith the Lord, will be unto her a wall of fire round about, and will be the glory in the midst of her. Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north, saith the Lord. For I spread you abroad as the four winds of the heaven, saith the Lord. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. Babylon. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, after the glory hath he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you. For he that toucheth you toucheth the apple of my eye, of his eye. For behold, I will shake mine hand upon them, and they shall be a spoil to their servants. And ye shall know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me. We need to know that God sent us. We need to know we're the apple of his eye. We need to know how much he loves us and how much we mean to him. And then the promise of God's presence, starting with verse 10. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for lo, I come, and I will dwell in the midst of thee, saith the Lord. And many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day, and shall be my people, and I will dwell in the midst of thee. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me unto thee. And the Lord shall inherit Judah, his portion in the holy land, and shall choose Jerusalem again. Be silent, O all flesh, before the Lord, for he is raised up out of his holy habitation. Think about that. It says, sing and rejoice. That's what brings God's presence, knowing how to rejoice, knowing how to be in his presence, knowing how to worship him, knowing how to praise him. It's time for us to understand these things. That's where God dwells, and I want God to dwell with me, so I want to know to worship. And it says, the Lord shall inherit Judah all. The Lord shall inherit Judah, his portion in the Holy Land. He's going to dwell in the midst of us, and he's going to choose Jerusalem again. Then cruising altitude, 1 Timothy 4, 11 through 16. These things command and teach, let no man despise thy youth. Be, it, be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself, and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. It's not about us. It's about us doing the work of God. It's about us working for God. It's about us giving God all. And when we give God all, oh boy, the places he will take us, the things we will do for his glory that we have no concept. That's not why we do this though. We do this just simply because we love him. And the other is just the icing on the cake that comes because we love Jesus more than we love anything else, more than we love creature comforts, more than we love being with our families. We love Jesus more. If we want to go, go to, if we want to be available for takeoff, to be cleared for takeoff, and then know how to take off, know how to anticipate takeoff, know how to reach cruising altitude, then we have to understand how to get there. And that'll be tomorrow's installment on this, but you might not see it for a week or more because of where we will be. We won't have much signal. But God bless you all and know that if we can post, we will post. So just keep an eye out and may the Lord bless you abundantly. May you find a greater depth in your relationship with God. May you find more time to pray and more time to be in his presence and more time to be in his word. And may you find more time to share your testimony, which is the living, breathing words that people need to hear. They need to hear your testimony. They need to hear what God has done for you and how God has blessed you. And when we share that, 
they can't argue with us. And then they will want what we have. And then we will be able to lay our hands on their heads and pray for them after they repent. We will lead them through repentance and we will pray for them and they will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And then we will be able to baptize them in the wonderful, wonderful, matchless name of the Lord Jesus Christ, which remits their sins into the sea of forgetfulness. And we will be able to explain to them about how to go back and fix things that need fixed so that they can move forward. Mm -hmm. And then we might need to talk to the people in the church about how not to hold things against those that come back to God when our backsliders come home. You see, it's time to be Jesus even to our backsliders. May the Lord bless you. And please, I pray that you also are cleared for takeoff. Bye from Masai Mara River Lodge in Masai Mara, Kenya.